in so many different faith traditions, there's a story of a person that comes to the Almighty after what we would say 120 years. And God says to the person who's uh, only recently left uh, their earthly mission, show me your wounds. And the person wasn't expecting that question. Perhaps they come from our faith tradition. They knew the Gemara and Shabbos. List six questions. Were you honest? Did you make time for Torah study? Did you invest in family life? Were you optimistic? Did you try to uh, advance to higher levels of wisdom? They weren't expecting the question. So they sheepishly respond to God and they say, Wounds? What wounds? I don't have any wounds. And the response from the Almighty was there nothing worth fighting for? You know, uh, in this world, uh, it's not easy. It's not easy to try to put oneself out there, uh, even in support of a cause that one believes in very deeply. There are the cynics, you have to deal with them, and then there are the naysayers, and you have to deal with them, and then there are the people who are hostile, and you have to deal with them. And as we come to Parshas Kisavu and Moshe Rabbeinu is winding up his journey, surely he had many, many, many wounds. And many wounds, of the great battles that he waged, first with Paro, and then with the Jewish people themselves. And Moshe tells the Jewish people that they'll come to a mountain in the land of Israel. He's no longer around. Har Grizim and Harival. And they'll be told by the Levim, Vanu Levim, Vamru Al Kol Yisrael Kol Ram, in a very loud voice, commanding voice, booming voice. The Levim will say, Avur Asher Lo Yakim is Divrei Atorah Zos Lasososam. Cursed is the one Asher Lo Yakim. The Ramban notes it doesn't say Asher Lo Yaaseh, who doesn't fulfill, but Asher Lo Yakim, who doesn't publicly fight for the values of Torah. Lamad made Vishamar Vaasa says the Ramban. You could have somebody who learns and who teaches and who's careful in every mitzvah saseh, in every lo saseh, he's scrupulous with all of the rules, but velokiyem, but he doesn't he doesn't fight for Torah in the public square. He doesn't fight for his shul, he doesn't fight for his community. That person is bichlal aror. It's a very harsh language. That person is cursed because they're not willing to sustain some wounds for something of ultimate value. And one of the things that I've said since the beginning, since I've come to the shul, September 12, 2016, that I never met a group of people more dedicated to their shul. Dedicated in so many different ways, in body and in spirit, and indeed in the financial support they've been so generous to give to the institution. Over this last year, when so many around us were experiencing wounds and continue to experience wounds of different kinds, and we're all going through a difficult transition period, especially those children who just went back to school or grandchildren, the uncertainties that surround that, the shul has tried to reciprocate the great loyalty that its wonderful membership has demonstrated towards it. Never met a group of people more devoted and more deserving of support from their shul. And so we ask, especially this time of year, of tshuva, of tefillah, of tzedakah, to help support the shul so that we will in turn be able to support each and every one of you. We know that the road ahead of us may still be long, that we're not quite out of the woods yet. We want to make sure that we have the wherewithal to continue to provide meaningful davening in the safest way possible as we've been doing outdoors with our masks and our distancing, and we're proud of it. We don't feel like we're in a race against anybody else to try to, quote, get back to normal, to be dochek es hasha, to force things. No, we'll continue to be very careful, but there are costs real costs associated with that. And to be able to provide to the community continued ongoing opportunities in Torah learning 
whether it's in person or whether it's virtual learning, and to do even more of that as we have been doing every single day through our WhatsApp group. We started with the pandemic. Some people say, you haven't finished that yet. I said, I won't finish until this is finished, until it's over, until uh, as a community, as a society, we, we, we're on the other end of this. And until that time, we'll do more learning and every single day, no matter what the time of year, but we need to support that. And of course, perhaps above everything else, so that we're in a position to continue to meet the needs of those who have borne the brunt of this emotionally and financially, and people who have sustained major reversals over the course of the last year, who find themselves as they approach Rosh Hashanah and the Yemei Din with a sense of trepidation as to what 5781 will bring. We have to be there for them as well. We're not an institution that turns anybody away in the final analysis, uh, people who come to us looking for help of different kinds, people who have been members of our shul family, never, ever, ever have we turned our back. And we don't ever plan on turning our back. And so we're reliant on you for your ongoing generosity and for your ongoing support so that we can continue to be a center for Torah, for Tefillah, for Chesed, and for all the wonderful initiatives that we're doing for just for justice of Tzedek Tzedek Tirdof in the broader community. We thank you for all the support you've provided up until now. We ask you for your continued support at this time of year. We know that Hashem will repay you many, many times over for the generosity that you showed to the community. Wishing everybody a wonderful Shabbos.